All right, holy paper. That's what this video is about. So here's a haul from Hobby Lobby. It's their master's touch line of different papers and um, watercolor pads and sketchbooks that they have there. I just think this is kind of a public service announcement to creative people. You need to go there when they have that half off master's touch sale because you can get any master's touch line products for half off. And even if you don't like the actual supplies or brushes or anything, you can get some great deals on paper, canvas, and anything else surface-wise that you need to create on. So these are just some of my things that I'm loving right now. And this is a collective haul. I didn't buy all this at once. That would be way too much money at one time. But first up, I have the Master Touch drawing pad. I really want to try these out in a larger size, but before I committed to that, I just wanted to do a simple one. I didn't want to have a whole pad of paper that I hated, so I got this little one just to test with, and so far, so good. It's normally $3.99, and it was half off, so $2 for 4 by 6 inches. That's about the size of a picture. And you get 50 sheets, and it's 95 pound or 145 GSM. It has kind of a cream tone to it, or an off-white color. I don't mind that. I really like that for drawing paper. I haven't done anything in it so far as far as extensive testing goes though and I just kind of tested some cheap pencils on it. So far I really like the texture of it and I'm looking forward to getting a bigger size to work on. Next up, these are my babies. I just love this paper so much. It is the Master's Touch Mixed Media Pad. They have them in all different sizes. This one's the 5.5 by 8.5. It is one of my personal favorites. I love it because this size can fit in my purse. I can take this book with me anywhere. And the paper is amazing. And they says right on there, versatile, heavyweight for all types of artwork. Okay, you see that sometimes and you just say, okay, yeah, right. Sometimes it's really not like that at all. And it tells you it accepts wet and dry mediums. It really does. I'm going to kind of show you. This isn't anything finished by any means. I've just been playing around in it. This is the kind of the test book to see the abuse that it can take and just experimenting in it. And then I've got all these other ones that I plan to, I don't know, do more finished type work in. You get 60 sheets in each one, which is just crazy to think how thick this paper must be because this book is at least an inch thick. So I have five of them. They're normally $7.99. I got them for half off. I guess I have six of them if you count that one, but that's a different size. So let's just see just a quick view of what this little book can do. Um, just to give you an idea of the paper. I mean, you can hear it when I lift it up. It's almost like a piece of Bristol board coming off of this paper. This is just silly little doodles. Don't mind any of that. There's not anything super finished in here. It's, this is just me playing around mostly. But um, oh, there's there's a little gouache illustration that's not finished. I was just reworking an old character design. That's from June. Um, I don't know what that is, but I was playing with watercolor just to see how much the paper would warp, and it really didn't here. These are those five below color pencils. This is the first day I got them. I was just swatching them out and just scribbling around and trying some blends. There's not a lot of darks in that kit, so I was just trying to see how certain things would layer. Nothing profound. Random doodle. Okay, whatever. Here's the real stuff. All right. Um, so this is just a gouache painting. And the paper has buckled a little bit. To be fair, I think I used a lot of water on this page. But, just to give you an idea of what that sketchbook might look like, there's some more down the line here that didn't buckle nearly as bad, so I just kind of want to show you that. Nothing to see here. Here we go. Here's another. This is kind of just me working on some buildings. I didn't finish this side of the paper at all, but there's a lot of gouache on this page, and it has not buckled yet. Same with this one. Just some simple little studies trying tones. Oh, that's me trying to do colored pencil fire. It's harder than it looks. Um, some watercolor swatches, pearlescent paints, and just some watercolor pads that I have. Now here goes some more watercolor tests. 
Um, this is just a little cheap watercolor set that I have. Kind of a poor example of a portrait. I'm trying some technique. Her eyes are really close together. <laughs> or maybe it's that ugly shadow I did. I can fix it later with gouache or something. This was just a little still life I was trying to do of my watercolor tubes and paint palette. And this page has hardly buckled. I mean, it looks almost totally flat. So I'm really surprised at that. And then just more watercolor and then just some watercolor kind of value study type doodles and again hardly any buckling of the paper so I am very impressed I was painting wood texture <laughs> this is just a little random oil pastel doodle I don't know this is ugly there's a smaller version of this that I really like and I keep trying to make a bigger version of the piece and it just looks crazy every time I do it I can't figure out what I did before but I want to remake this and make it a painting or something but it never looks like the original sketch I'll show it one day oil pastel swatches and the rest is blank but overall I mean it's warped a little bit on some of those pages I went crazy with, but for the most part, it really isn't bad. I am impressed. For $4, and the paper holds up that well, and you can put that much abuse on it. So, of course, I had to get it in another size, and that is the 8.5 by 11. Or no, excuse me, 7 by 10. Haven't used it yet, though, because I have not filled up even this one or any of the other ones. Lord knows... I need any more paper. I am going to try out their watercolor paint pads. I have not used uh, any of their watercolor pads, I don't think, yet. Maybe I did do one. I don't remember which paper I used. I think I did use one. Um, Oh, so I do have another one. I don't know where it's at right now, but I've got a smaller size because I did these little watercolor ones. I did this one and I didn't like it. So then I redid it and it came out much, much better. Look at that difference. This was just a 20 minute difference between each other. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway. So, so far I really like their paper. I think I got a couple different sizes just to see which one I liked. I don't know why I picked up a square one, though. This is 8x8 eight eight inches, and I don't usually use squares for anything. It's just such an awkward shape. I never know how to do the composition right. And But $5.99, half off, $3, 12 sheets, and it is 300 GSM, so I really, really like it. I've got some other larger paper pads, the Canson... Um, watercolor paper. I have a couple Strathmore pads that are pretty old and I haven't really finished those yet. I've only just been getting into watercolor. I've always kind of hoarded supplies for it but never really seriously tried it. So this year I'm making a concentrated effort to get into watercolor and gouache. So I thought it'd be fun to try this paper. It is cold press. I really love the look of cold press. I like that texture that comes through. I just feel like it gives the work so much character. And even with my pencil drawings and colored pencil work, I like to use paper that has any type of a tooth or a texture to it. I just, I don't know, I really love how it looks. So if you see me with watercolor paper, it's probably going to be cold press. 10 out of 10 for those so far. Lastly, I have two bound sketchbooks, the hardbound ones. I love hardbound sketchbooks now. I didn't used to like them before, but I have a newfound love. <laughs> um, I have one I've been working in for literally a few years. That's why the love is newfound. This one is the brand Art Alternatives. I'm not sure where that brand is from or who specifically sells it, but I haven't found it anywhere yet here. I think maybe it's our local art supply shop, our art supply depot. I don't know. Um, but I haven't seen it at any of the bigger stores in the area, but I was hoping to find some more books like this, and I sort of did. These are similar in style, but the paper is different. I don't know. I've had this book for so long, I have no idea what the paper weight is to this. But 
it must be thick enough to where it can do paint because I've been painting in here without any problems. And the paper has held up fine. I've got this page just playing with gouache and the paper doesn't warp at all and I was just really shocked by that. There's this series, I haven't finished anything yet. I've just been playing around with it. I'm not good at gouache by any means, but normally I just do studies in here, ballpoint pen, and I have a bunch of pencil and anatomy and things of that sort. But I like the abuse this paper has been able to take. And I wanted to find something else that would do that. So Master's Touch has those hardbound sketchbooks. And the paper actually feels thicker, so I'm thinking I might be able to do that much, if not more, with them. But I got two different sizes this time. The one I have right now that I'm still working on filling is 11 by 14. I have, um, and then I have an 8.5 by 11 that I bought and another 11 by 14 because I am really loving working in that size. I never thought I would. I've always bought smaller sketchbooks. These big pages are always so intimidating, but for studies and then planning paintings and larger pieces. I just really like that size and if you don't want to do a full piece on that page you can always just divide the paper up. So really like that. Now they're not really as portable as the smaller ones. That's probably my the only real downfall for me but I also love that the hardbound ones they hold up better over time. I mean I think I'm pretty sure I've had this one since 2013. I might be wrong. It might have been longer than that, but it looks good. When you buy those spiral bound ones, after opening and closing it so many times and turning the pages, they tend to wear and fray and eventually the pages start falling out. So I was happy to actually finally get one of these and have it hold up. So that ends my paper support haul. Nothing super crazy, but if anyone didn't know or isn't already buying from there, I know there's kind of controversy about buying from big box stores, but if it's all you got in your area and you can get more for your money, why not? And at the end of the day, where you shop at is going to be your personal choice, but 50% off of papers where normally you'll have to pay $20 for some of that stuff. These sketchbooks are normally $20 a piece. It's just crazy. Why wouldn't you want to save money, you know? Art's expensive enough as it is. So, that's all. That's my public service announcement. Hope everyone has a good day, and thanks for tuning in.